Right, yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome to worship here at Bethlehem on this second Sunday of Advent. Peace to you and welcome from the God who uproots the indestructible, the Savior who rescues the unlovable, the Spirit who equips the incapable. I am Pastor Dan Patel. I am the pastor here at Bethlehem Lutheran Church here in Sturbridge, Massachusetts. Welcome to those who are here for the first time. Uh, welcome to those who are joining us on Facebook Live this morning. Uh, worship materials for today's service uh, can be found on the table in the narthex. Please note there is an entire booklet uh, for the liturgy or we are using for this uh, Advent season. Uh, also, just note there are some more uh, congregational participation options. Well, they're not really options. Uh, you kind of have to do them. Very well. uh, please do them. Uh, that we normally have. Um, but it's a good thing, and I just want to make sure I draw your attention to that um, as the service begins. Uh, for those who are online with us, uh, electronic worship materials are on our Facebook page and are also sent out to our email this, this Friday. Uh, if you would like to receive those in our uh, e-news with our ministry opportunities, please send your contact information to office at BethlehemSturbridge.org. Again, that's office at BethlehemSturbridge. Or. Uh, as we usually do, uh, uh, as a congregation gathered in person and online, uh, we begin our service uh, by lifting up your prayer requests. What joys and concerns do we have to lift up this morning? Beth. A joy that Frank Hank needs a possible surgery next week on a guaranteed head and his prayers. Prayers for Frank successful surgery on the set and then uh, continued prayers for his healing as well. Continued prayers for Mike. Continued prayers for Mike. And for you. No. Uh, prayers of a joy for the birth of our friend uh, Megan and Matt, their daughter Eleanor and Grace who will be born this evening. So these prayers of joy for the gift of Eleanor. Same Pray delivery. Prayers of joy for the gift of Eleanor. Give thanks for new life. And I guess I will add to that. My nephew was born on Friday, Gavin Raymond Patel. So uh, we rejoice in a healthy baby. Healthy mom, and we uh, really looking forward to seeing them at Christmas. Other prayer requests this morning, Mike. Uh, prayers of choice. We rejoice that our stop went to a surgery fine. We got a few minor setbacks, but we won't rest your heart. Prayers of joy for Mike's success or for Scott's successful surgery, um, and his continued prayers for his healing and recovery. Great, Terry. Well, well, keep 
not going right on a train, uh, on a train lane, and could um, rejoicing can it make your kids reverse their plans to say, um, and is doing um, well to her school. Um, and also rejoicing that my mom came and has arrived and is, is here to help each other. We rejoice with Janet and her successful uh, surgery, uh, and we rejoice with you um, and your family, uh, as at least that part of this journey uh, has been completed, and we, we pray for continued healing. And we rejoice that your mom has returned to the area to be with you. Kathy. So one of my students, Annie, uh, has been uh, a Fulbright scholar out in Namibia and is making her plans to return home here in the next two weeks. So she's been uh, amazing on this uh, trip and service that she's done to the community in Namibia, which is asking for safe prayers so she travels back and just adjusting back to stateside. Prayers for a safe return home and uh, for her transition back uh, to this country. Absolutely. Ellie. For Ukraine and to hope for a disaster so that we will be able to still have hope. To prayers for Ukraine, uh, who are looking at a harsh winter. Um, pray for them. For everyone who knows too much bloodshed. on Facebook. Okay. Not seeing any other prayer requests, I'll invite you to stand and face the font as we begin our service with our confession and forgiveness.
Please be seated. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please stand as you are able. Christ our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We continue this morning with our readings from Scripture. Our first reading is from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. 
He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lioness and the fatling together, and a child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountains. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nation shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Romans, chapter 15, verses 4 through 13. Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfast and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another, in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you, for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God, in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs, and in order that Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written. Therefore, I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all of Judea were going out to him, and all the region among the Jordan. And they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourself, We have Abraham our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stories to raise children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the tree. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the shaft will be, he will burn with unquenched punchable fire. This is the gospel of the Lord. 
Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Please be seated. I'd invite the kids to come join Miss Mel up front for a children's word.
Teach us to find joy. Teach us to find joy. In the gift of Jesus. In the gift of Jesus. May his joy, may his joy fill our hearts. Fill our hearts. And overflow. And overflow. To everyone we meet. To everyone we meet. Amen. Amen. All right, so you can bring those wreaths, and then I thought, too, while you're listening, Pastor, if you want, you can make some bracelets and give them to people that make you joy while you're listening to Pastor's sermon today. Lots of gifts. All right? My mom and dad give me joy. They, your mom and dad give you joy. <laughs> That's lovely. My mom and dad give me joy, too. All right, you guys ready to go back? Do you have all your stuff? All right, we'll see you at coffee time, maybe. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mel. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. If David Letterman were here right now and was ready to give a top ten list of my least favorite things to do, at least the first five of those would center around packing, preparing to move, and moving itself. I mean, in my mind, there is nothing worse. I mean, seriously. And I suspect I am probably not alone in this sentiment. Anyone else with me? All right, what's up, thank you, Ellie. Yes, 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 yes. All right, good, that's what I thought. So over the last 20 years or so, I have moved fairly frequently, starting with moving back and forth from Moravian College for four years, then moving home after graduation, staying home for a year, and then moving to Glastonbury. Staying, that, staying in that apartment for two years, and then moving to a condo in the same town. And then next was a move to Philadelphia for seminary with a broken ankle, that was fun. Uh, we moved back home for the summer, followed by the biggest move yet, which is a move hungry for a year. Although, surprisingly, that was probably one of the most easier, one of the easier moves, because I couldn't bring a whole lot of stuff with me. There may be something to be said for that. Uh, then I came back from hungry to stay home for a year, then moved to Brickfield, Connecticut for internship, and a second stint at seminary, and then finally moved to Southbridge to begin my time together with you all here in this place. I think I need another cup of coffee after listing all of that. That is just too much moving for my liking. Each move brought with it, of course, the necessary preparations in order for that particular move to be successful. This included looking ahead in preparation for the next destination, but also, of course, wanting to be sure that when I left a place, it was in good shape. The preparations, of course, were many. You need cardboard boxes in order to pack. You need a moving truck that has to be booked. You need to uh, restock your cleaning supplies in order to assure a friendly exit and subsequent arrival. On both ends, there is usually a deep clean required, including dusting, vacuuming, sweeping, and assorted other tasks such as cleaning the fridge, and so on and so forth. Then, of course, once that has been done, or maybe while you're doing it, comes the packing. And probably what is perhaps a little more painful, yet definitely necessary, is the purging. Getting rid of all the stuff that you don't need just to make that move just a little easier and a little less painful. So though the purging is something that I always dreaded whenever I moved, it was, of course, in the end, necessary to make the move just a little bit easier. Now, if my parents are watching, they are probably wondering why it took me so long to come to this realization. Sorry, Mom and Dad. Now, this purging usually consisted of donating old clothes, tossing items that are no longer needed, and generally working to consolidate what is absolutely necessary for the journey ahead. Moving, packing, 
cleaning and purging, a sometimes painful yet necessary process of preparation so that the journey forward may go smoother or smoother than it would. And though necessary, it still remains on my list of least favorite things to do. In our gospel lesson for today, we encounter this wild man, wilderness creature, locust eating, John the Baptist. John the Baptist always shows up around this time because his story, this story, though it varies depending on which gospel you are reading, is in fact one of the few that is in all four of the gospels. John's wilderness preaching is something that clearly was an emphasis for the authors of these books. And on this second Sunday of Advent, we are once again called to hear John's words. Now the location for this gospel lesson for today is something that shouldn't be ignored. It should be known that John's preaching doesn't take place in the town or square of the villages or the cities, but it takes place out in the wilderness. A place that is dangerous and perilous. Even just trying to get there requires a great deal of preparation. Traveling, traveling to such a place was often fraught with peril, particularly from robbers and thieves boats of a less than savory nature. Group travel was the only way to make it such a location, and it was only for a certain amount of reasons that one would travel in such a place to visit family or to meet a business commitment and whatnot. Yet John is in this place for a reason and offers a proclamation and a statement about who God is and where God is coming from. It's a proclamation that is honest, a little bit harsh, and perhaps convicting. And yet, it also bears with it truth and invitation. Citing the prophet Isaiah, one of the first points that is raised is the call to prepare the way of the Lord and to make the paths, to make the highways straight. Now, like moving, which has its season. This is, of course, a season of preparation, preparing for guests, preparing for Christmas, preparing for parties and gatherings, preparing for the arrival of family, preparing to move, maybe, although I hope none of you are here are preparing for that. We know that the preparation part of such things can be challenging and difficult and requires often a lot of hard work to reach the end goal. In the midst of this season then, as we consider the preparations that are, we are making here right now, the question on this second Sunday of Advent is centered around what steps of preparation are we taking to make straight the highways and to prepare the way of the Lord in our time and in our place, particularly for those who are seeking peace and hope and joy and love in this place and out in the community. Now, preparing to move, at least when I did it, often indicated a fairly significant life-changing event, whether that was transitioning to a job, beginning grad school, or making a major move out of the country. And as we continue to have it, we, as we continue to make preparations for the Christ incarnate, we too find ourselves at a significant moment in the life of the church. As we continue to learn what it is to be to the church together in this changed world, what do we need to prepare for as our journey continues? What changes do we need to make for ourselves and our community that in the midst of the wilderness of this world will allow us to live more fully and faithfully into our call to bring love and peace and joy and service and compassion and community to all parts of the body of Christ. Now as we move towards the end of the gospel lesson for today, we hear some rather unsettling words from John. John speaks of the need for things to be cleared away, to clear away the dead wood, to chop down the trees that aren't bearing fruit, and to burn away the shadow. As our preparations continue this season, one of the questions that we all face when we're moving one that's also relevant to the church 
centers around what things we need to purge and what things we need to let be burned away so that new life and new ministry opportunities can emerge. As I was preparing for the sermon this week, I tuned in, as I usually do, to the Pulpit Fiction podcast. And on this particular episode, I was reminded of the beneficial nature of fire. Fire, whether that's in a forest or in a prairie, can at times be beneficial, clearing away the shrubs and the chaff, clearing away the debris, at the same time providing nutrients for the soil, creating space for new life to emerge from the ashes. Let's not forget, after all, that we are a resurrection people, and that at the heart of our story as a people of faith, we center around our, ourselves around the story of Good Friday and Easter Sunday. And in the middle comes the Easter Vigil, that uncertain space of not knowing where we have been and still awaiting where we are going. But in this story, there is new life that emerges from that. This past weekend, I had the opportunity to experience an example of such new life. One of my dear friends, Pastor Dustin Wright, who I went to Sunday school with starting in the second grade and who grew up together through confirmation and youth group. And somebody put something in the water because he and I both ended up becoming pastors. So I'm not sure what was going on that year, but something happened. The Holy Spirit was moving. And he is now a pastor in Rotterdam, New York, and he has recently, along with his congregation, worked hard to develop and run a community center out of the building that once belonged to another of local churches, which had faithfully and prayerfully discerned that they were ready to merge with Dustin's church and to close their space. This space, now up and running, serves the community in several ways. It houses their local food pantry, and it frequently runs events that serve the needs of the community, an underserved community, needs that otherwise wouldn't have been met. Now this past Saturday, I joined just Dustin to support one of these events, which in this case offered an opportunity for folks to come in and get some free Christmas portraits, to share in some food and fellowship, to have the opportunity to receive new clothes and the opportunity for folks to receive gifts for their families who otherwise wouldn't be able to afford such things for their kids this Christmas season. In doing this, in changing the, this space into an opportunity for community, the work of my friend's church has found a way to bring forth new life and new opportunities from what was once perhaps considered dead. Perhaps more importantly, they have been able to provide a little sliver of peace and joy and dignity and respect and respite to those who know too little of that these days. They indeed are making us straight the highway. They are, in fact, preparing the way of As we put in the work of preparation this season, as we prepare the way of the Lord, the invitation for today is to consider the process that comes with that preparation. What things can we set aside? What things can we cut out of our lives that will allow something new to emerge? The process of preparation isn't easy, and it often takes a great deal of work. But like perching before a move, it can be incredibly renewing and restorative, particularly when we can let things go that no longer serve a purpose or have proven to be unhealthy. In such a moment, as we set these things aside, we can turn our attention to what's essential so that we can then ground ourselves in the words that come to us from Micah chapter 6. He has told you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? Amen. We continue this morning with our hymn of the day, which is Comfort, Comfort, Now My People, which is found 
in the ELW, the red hymnal, number 256. Again, that's comfort, comfort, now my people, found in the red ELW, number 256, or in your electronic worship materials. Please, please stand as you are able. Confessing the faith we share through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. Heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. God, you renew the church in every age. We give thanks for hymn writers and theologians, inspired teachers, writers, and musicians to delight and instruct your people. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
You give us a vision of creation and harmony, when hurting and destruction will be no more. Teach us to be stewards of the earth and companions to its creatures. Restore to balance and wholeness what human greed has harmed. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Spirit of life who paints the skies in every hue, we praise you for morning and night, for dawn and dusk, and for every moment in between. We praise you for the vibrant, loud, and serene colors of creation. We revel in the ever-changing of the seasons. We thank you for the infinite, as yet undiscovered diversity of your creatures, of galaxies beyond our imagining. Teach us to feel awe again. Teach us to see and to celebrate the stunning beauty in all that you have made. God, in your mercy, you defend the cause of all who are poor and oppressed. Raise up leaders who will govern with equity and serve the common good. Guide judges, lawmakers, and public officials to protect the rights of those who cannot advocate for themselves. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You deliver those in need from suffering and fear. Come to the aid of any who are exploited or abused, especially children, elders, and victims of human trafficking. Provide safety and help our neighbors without shelter, help refugees, and those fleeing violence. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all who are suffering from COVID-19. Be present with those who continue to suffer long-term symptoms. Comfort those who have lost loved ones. Empower and give courage to medical professionals providing care at the risk of their own health. And teach us how to learn of this pandemic while still caring for the most vulnerable among us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You urge your people to welcome one another as you have welcomed us. Nurture ministries of hospitality and care in this and every congregation. We pray for people who are homebound, hospitalized, or separated from loved ones. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have given us hope in healing through doctors and medicine. We give thanks for successful surgeries and healing for Janet, Frank, Scott, and Mike. Lord, you have given us joy through children time together. We praise you for new life in baby Eleanor and baby Brad. Thank you for children's voices. Thank you for time with family and friends. We are grateful for Terry's mom coming out to support her family. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, we ask for your hand of protection in this season of Advent. To protect soldiers and shipmates like Miguel, to protect Ukrainian people and their support systems. And we also ask for your protection on Annie coming back from the Nineveh. We embrace all who have died trusting your promises and we give thanks for their faithful witness. Sustain us in hope until we are united with them in the joy of your eternal presence. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all of your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Also with you. And to share a sign of peace with one another in whichever way we feel comfortable. And for those online, please share a like and loving laugh for a comment of peace. Remembering God's overflowing new life among us, let us gather our tithes and offerings this morning. There are a number of ways that you can give. The first is you can visit our website, www.bethlehemsturbridge.org, and by scrolling down to the bottom of the homepage, you'll find a link to PayPal. There you can make your offering with your debit or credit card or PayPal account. You can also continue to mail your offering to Bethlehem Lutheran Church. Send it simply to 345 Main Street, Sturridge, Massachusetts, 01566. Again, that's Bethlehem Lutheran Church, 345 Main Street, Sturridge, Massachusetts, 01566. For those gathered here this morning, there is a basket on the table in the narthex. 
where you may leave your offering if you so choose at the end of the service. For those who are with us online this morning, now is the time to have your bread and wine or grape juice ready as we prepare for the feast that is for all. Let us enter into a time of prayerful meditation as we make our offerings. Pray with me. God, God we have labored and toiled for our money and our time and our families and our freedom. We have cherished what we thought was ours. Yet, in a moment, we recognize that every truly good thing was a treasure we had taken from your land. We give you these gifts as a sign of your love and faithfulness. Use them to grow more hope in the 
this world. Amen. Holy Jesus, be our guest, for you are already here. God is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts in praise. We lift them up to our God. Let us give thanks to the God of our salvation. It is, it is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, once you made humankind, you could do nothing but love them. Holy Spirit, once you called the prophets, you gave them words to afflict and words to heal. And they could do nothing but speak them. Holy Jesus, once you committed to take the human frame, you walked the path to the end. You did not rush through childhood. You never used your power for yourself. You faced your enemies on their terms. You taught your friends until they learned. You allowed yourself to die the same way you were born, as a fragile person in a filthy place, with bare flesh and blood, where bare flesh and blood were spilled, give one. This is rarely a kind world, but you love it anyway. This was rarely an innocent world, but you saved it anyway. We are rarely peaceful people, but you have swallowed us in peace. We will always hunger for healing. There exists a grace. set their plot in motion, the disciples sat down at the table. The bread was on the table, the wine was in the glass. This was the night for which Jesus was born. Even if you know this is part of God's plan, you might still grieve. To say goodbye to your closest friends, do not know you will die. To end the chapter of friendship with the one you love before they turn away. Even good days bring sadness and loss. And it was a good day, that final filled with certainty and hope. When Jesus lingered at the table and took that bread and cup. That night, the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will Spirit, just as you made a stable into a nursery fit for the sovereign of heaven, you make this table a holy cradle for salvation. You fashion this bread and wine into, into the presence of Christ's love, and you make us your people who can never separate from you again.
God, your heart split into the pain of the world, till you left yourself in heaven to be born a child like one of us. Now bless this bread which is broken, so we might draw together as one. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Here at Bethlehem, we practice an open table. All are welcome to come to this table, which expands constantly so that all may know the love of Christ and share in the feast with their neighbors. Please know that should you choose to partake in only the bread or the wine, we believe that Christ's presence is in both the elements, no matter whether they are consumed separately or together. Trusting that the crucified and risen Christ is fully present for you in, with, and under one element. We serve communion today with a station for bread, which will be here in the center aisle, and after receiving your wafer, you may choose to intent or dip in either a chalice of wine or a chalice of grape juice. If you are in need of a gluten free option, please let me know as you come forward. And if you would prefer a blessing to kneel, please come forward with your arms crossed over your shoulders. People of God, come to the table and encounter the God who waits to love you. Amen.
meal has ended. Now let the remembering begin. Remember you have met God in this place. Remember that no person who meets God can ever be the same. We pray you have you called us. We have listened. You have invited us. We took our place at the table. You have sat with us so that we might follow you. Now there is nowhere else we can go because you alone have the words of life. What announcements do we have this morning for the good of the community? Now. Uh, the intergenerational Christmas pageant is coming. So if you're interested in being part of it, please let me know. I have a bunch of people who are volunteers, so I'm just trying to figure out parts. So if you're interested in a TV part or whatever part you want, you can give me. <laughs> so just let me know. Uh, my email is in the bulletin. Yep. Uh, but you can also let me know today. So. Thank you. The pageant will be December 18th at our 9.30 service, and there will be a rehearsal that Saturday, the 17th, at 4 o'clock. Correct. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Matt. The 9.30 will be gathered on the Saturday before, and the plans for the will be posted to the So there'll be a, a food collection here at Bethlehem on uh, December 17th from 9 to 12. And then due to a situation with our uh, with the farm where we normally get our poinsettias, uh, we are inviting people to bring uh, their own flowers that day uh, so they can be put in the sanctuary, uh, Christmas cactus, whatever type of uh, flower, any color you would like uh, for that, that Saturday or that Sunday, uh, we will have them placed in the sanctuary. And thanks to that for well, coordinating that. Carol. Ooh, next Saturday, the 10th, is the Millennium Baptist Conference. Um, there's a, I did put it in, put in the back for personal care items, gifts, so wonderful. Um, I'll put the whole list of things to put in the newsletter. And we also, <coughs> after the concert, there will be a reception. The chorus is making little sandwiches and um, whatnot, but we have to step in and get it. So I'm going to need help with uh, volunteers for baking. Um, yeah, but you can bring them earlier in the day on Saturday, and I'll kind of set up the room, and I need some help with that too. Um, Andrea is away, and she cannot give her back. <laughs> So next Saturday, December 10th at 5 o'clock, Millennium Magic will be having uh, their first Christmas concert here for three years. Uh, so do come out for that. There is information in the e-news about tickets. Uh, there are also some flyers on the tables uh, with more information on the concert. And then uh, please help Carol with baked goods. Uh, have those brought in uh, early Saturday. Uh, again, Millennium Magic next Saturday at 5. I've heard them rehearse before COVID. They're beautiful, so let's, I would love to see as many people out here to support them. It should be a good time. Melissa. Um, two dates to block out on the calendar. So January 1st is our last carol service. Um, which is starting at 10.30? Yeah, 10.30. So um, after that, we're doing a ugly sweater, minute to minute potluck. Um, so there's a sign up sheet in the e news, but if you wanted to just tell me what you want to bring, I'd happily add that. And then January 28th, block that date out. Um, it's a Saturday at noon. We're going to do a painting um, afternoon, brush it off, it's coming in. So either canvas or white is August. More to come on that. Uh, so, yes, our January 1st service, which is New Year's Day, will be at 10 30 instead of 9 30. This is a one-time only kind of deal, uh, but we do that in order so that we can flow into the potluck uh, and enjoy uh, our ugly Christmas sweaters and our uh, minute to minute festivities and enjoy some time together um, after our lessons and carols service on Sunday, January 1st at 10.30 a.m. Uh, I thought we were doing that so you could sneak in. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> there's always been a no Christmas Day service uh, from 
following Sunday. Uh, an important note, uh, Holden Evening Prayer will take place next week, Wednesday. They will not. No, the 14th. The 14th? Next week. Right? Yes, the 14th. Next week? A week from Wednesday. A week from Wednesday. Yes. Okay. Uh, Holden Evening Prayer will take place on the 14th of December at 7 o'clock. Uh, you're invited to come out for a short service of uh, prayer and meditation. Uh, it's a beautiful service uh, with lots of music. And uh, Mike Jones, thank you for sending up the back signal. Heather, do you have an announcement? <laughs> Heather, do you have an announcement? We set up the location in the Star Church and recording in the local community. And if you are an artist, um, So the giving tree is in the narthex, uh, set up with tags, ready to be taken, supporting uh, local families and cathedral in the night. Uh, please have your unwrapped gifts back here on Sunday, December 18th. And thank you to Laura for uh, creating the tags for us. And thanks to Laura for creating the tags for the tree. Ellen. Thanks, Ellen. For those online, uh, if you would like to be added to the coffee hour schedule, uh, please, link, please let Ellen and Ellen know uh, for the coming year. Heather. that hasn't happened in a while, but uh, Bethlehem is joining the uh, Liberty, our local youth group organization, uh, for uh, some shopping and gifting for those who are in need of it, and meeting here at the church at 2.30 to ride over. Uh, so uh, for those who may be watching online but can join later, uh, meet here uh, at 2.30 at the church. Uh, and I'm also told that there will be pizza, I think. Pastor Andrew, so there will be pizza as well. Um, so note that. Don't want to leave that out. Thanks, Heather. Other announcements this morning. Is there anything on Facebook? Not seeing any other announcements. Uh, we will continue in our service with a blessing. Please stand as you are able. God, the eternal word, who dwells with us in Jesus, and who holds us in the grace of the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our sending song is prepared.
God willed and he would be called. God, let us be your servants wherever this road goes. God, you could have judged us, but you chose us. You have made us worthy so we might speak your words. You will guide us down the path that leads to home. Every other path is no longer a path for me. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.